minutes from the Associated Press. Hey, uh, Greg, you, there are a number of elite defensive linemen in the Big Ten and around the country this year. You have one of them. Is it getting harder to recruit them? Is it getting harder to find and recruit them and get them to that level than it has before? Well, I don't. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know if it's harder to to find them. Um, I think. Uh, I think you, you can always you can find some outstanding athletes. It's it's what happens when they get here, and I think that that's what you see is a is a real tribute to, to Coach Johnson. You know, I mean, a lot of players are are pretty darn good coming out of high school. You know, it, it's what are they when they're sophomore and junior year and senior year, and and how much development is. It's not about it's not about really finding players. It's pretty. That's that's given. It's what you do with them when you get them, and uh, I think that's a real credit to Coach Johnson what he's done with these guys. Uh, third, second row, right, uh, Tony. Greg, um, what goes through your mind when you see Drew Crispin punting from the fifty and the ball gets downed at the four, and now you get to go out there and, and send you guys out there? I, I think I'm at a great place. That's what I think. When I see that, I go, boy, I, I, it, it's an awesome thing to see that ball stop right there and you have a chance to go on a long field. And, that, and our special teams, uh, it, that's a real credit. I mean, I tell you what, when you're, when you're able to coach uh, on a defensive staff and have three equal parts, I mean, when you have an offense and then you have a special teams, it, it, makes, it, a, it makes it a pretty good day. Greg, the bullet position was talked about a lot this offseason. Two games in, it seems like Brendan's role was a little different this week than it was week four. How do you feel like that position's evolving so far? Well, I think it's it's evolving very well. And and, uh, and Brendan had a had a good week last week of practice and, and uh, did some very good things in the game. And uh, you know, a lot of the teams we've played against have been in some twelve personnel, two tight ends, and and uh, you know, and then. When teams start spreading out and start, you know, getting a little looser that way, we, we, we like to go with a bullet position more. So, and, and a lot of it, again, is development. You know, I mean, as, that's a new position for him. And, uh, the, you know, the more every rep he gets, the more, the more he plays it, the better we are. And uh, it's been good. Explain that to him that, hey, there's going to be more opportunities for you to play later in the season based on game plan. No, he's played a lot of football. He understands that. You know, I don't have to, you know, you have to tell that to him. I mean, he, he, he sees it. He knows, he, you know, he, he knows that we trust, uh, he trusts the system. He trusts what we do. And uh, he knows that that's a great opportunity for him. Greg, how much uh, fun is it to coordinate a defense when you have Chase Young out there doing what he's doing so far? Oh, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's great. I mean, that, and, and not just Chase, you know, I mean, he's, he's, Chase has done some great things, but man, I tell you, you see from the back end, I mean, the guys, some of the things that they, they've done, I mean, I, I, I won't signal out anybody, but I mean, just think about that interception. I mean, that, that's a great play by Sean Wade. You know, I mean, and you can go on and on, and uh, you know, and yeah, Chase. Yes, that's fun. It's and it's, but it's fun looking up and down the line. It's fun looking at the backers and how much they've improved. And uh, and we just touched it. You know, I mean, we we all believe our players believe that we we can improve more and more every single time. And uh, that's what we have to do to to get where we want to get. It seems like there are times where Chase is getting one or two or three blockers, and then you guys drop him out. And that seems like it creates a lot of other havoc. <laughs> it seems like you get, just get creative with the way you use him. Is that fair? Well, I think when you have four, the thing that you get creative on is when you have four guys that can rush, go ahead and pick your poison. You know, you want to double this guy, then these other three are one on one. And, and that's what our D line is really, really, they, they're proud of that. And that's what, that, that really helps us. Yeah, you and you walked into a situation with a defense that the Ryan Day said was scarred. Um, you've been with them now nine months or so. Are you at all surprised by the way that they've started the season as dominating as it's been, or did you see that pretty much from the start? Well, first thing, I don't really even know what happened before. I don't care. I, I didn't care. You know, 
What I did see when I walked in the very first day is I saw a group, a group of guys that worked unbelievably hard every single day in that weight room. And every day in the spring and every meeting in, in camp, you saw a group of defensive guys that, that, that loved each other, that wanted to become as good as they could be, that respected each other, and, uh, and know that they've just scratched it right now. You know, and so, you know, I, get, I don't know what it was before. It doesn't matter. I, I, I know what I see every day. I come in that meeting, and every day we have a chance to be with them. It's, uh, you're really proud, and you're excited for them. And you said you can get better, you must get better. In what areas does that have to happen? What, what has to improve? Well, every, 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 player, every player can get better on his technique. I mean, there's not, there's not many games where a young man goes through that with 100% pluses you know and and if you want to be as good as you can be then every day you evaluate yourself and you get better every day you know and there are all kinds of different techniques that in in phases but but every one of our guys know they can get better uh, third row right, Rob. greg you've been at this level you've been in nfl um what poses a bigger problem the guy that can stay in the pocket and pick you apart or the kind of the dual threat guy uh, at this level dual threat level the dual threat guy at this level by far and, and uh, you know when a guy when a guy stays in the pocket you just need to look in uh, in coach Halfley's room and say okay I hope I have a really good secondary and then you look in Larry's room and you say I hope I have a really good front so I can get a pass rush but it, when you have a guy that can scramble can make things happen with his feet as well as throwing it it really it really makes it uh, more difficult for you the NFL because the great ones, the Brady's, the Peyton Manning's, they are not dual threat guys. What's, how does that? I think I think the biggest reason is because they're getting paid a lot of money, and for one of those guys to get hit and get knocked out, their whole franchise, you know. And I just I believe that that you know if you're going to be a mobile quarterback and if you're going to be one of those quarterbacks that, that does that, you know, there, there, there's the the time clock is ticking a little bit too sometimes, you know, and. So I think that's why in the NFL. Fourth row uh, left. Andy? Yeah, Coach. Uh, Michael Warren entered last Saturday. He had 1,300 yards in the previous season, rushed for 15 yards on 10 carries. I guess if you could point to one, the biggest thing, obviously there's a lot of factors that go into defending a run, but what's the biggest thing that this defense uh, is doing right now to stop running backs? Well, I think we're playing, I don't know if there's one single thing. I think, I think we're playing... Uh, we're taking great pride in their technique, and they're playing very, very hard. You know, I think I might have mentioned this the first time. Uh, one of the biggest things in our defense is running to the football. And when you run to the football and you play with great effort, the thing that you find out happening happens is your missed tackles slowly start going down, and your big plays really go down. And uh, that's a huge, huge part of our defense, and, and our guys have bought into that. And and I, if you saw, I, a great example is the interception again uh, by, by Tough. I mean, if you watch that, that's almost in the fourth quarter of a long game, and you got almost every player on the team on the defense running as hard as they can to that football. That's what we want, and that's what we're proud of. Uh, Greg, uh, when you look at Indiana this year compared to the last several years, what do you see that's different about them offensively? Well, I, I think they're a very, very good football team. And uh, over the years, going against them, uh, Indiana always is very well coached. They play extremely hard. Um, they, you know, I, I, they're going to be a very big test. And, uh, you know, the thing that, that, that they do a great job of is, again, they got a mobile quarterback, uh, and uh, they're not afraid to spread it out so that you have a number of people that have to do their technique, not just one or two. And, uh, and their tempo, you know, I mean, the same thing. It's going to be uh, a mindset of our guys playing as, as hard as they can, and it's going to be very important that the next guy that goes in plays as hard as he can. You know, this is your first year here, but what, what, is, the, what is the key, the trick, whatever you want to call it, when you take a defense on the road? I mean, what, what is different that, that you will make a point about, et cetera? Well, I, I think when you go on the road, the, the thing that's most important is that it's you guys. It's this, it's this group. 
It's it's not the it's not the going into the into the shoe and and having to hold everybody there with you and all that. Now you're on your own. Now 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 boy, you better do it. And uh, and you, you got to really trust each other. And you you know it's. Uh, you know, you're going into the alley a little bit. You're walking into that alley now, and we, we need to, everybody's back to us, and let's go. Second row left, Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, watching the first, well, more this past game than the Florida Atlantic <coughs> game, it seemed every time there was a down and distance change, you're running three and four guys in, and three or four guys are running out. It just seems like organized chaos, I think, for what you guys do, and you play 16, 18 players. Mm -hmm. I know it seems like when the game's on the line on defense. What goes into that organization to where the three guys that are coming in, the three guys know they're going out, and there's doesn't seem like there's any hiccups at all with what you guys were doing. The execution was – they didn't score. I mean, that was the result. Well, I, I, you know, I, it goes back again. You know, when you have guys that have bought in and everybody that wants to be a part of, of success – then you're going to have small little roles that you can do. And when you have those roles, you better make sure you're right on top of it. That being said, when a different personnel group is called out, you better be ready to go in there. And that back out, backup better be ready to go in there also. And they've done a great job of that. And, and again, I, our coaches that coach the positions are on top of that also, where, okay, th this is the personnel group that we want in, bang, they're in there. And uh, that's a credit to them. And you got a couple guys who last year would have played about 80 or 90 percent of the snaps, and they're only playing about 50 percent of the snaps right now. Um, is there some ego massaging going on behind the scenes to say the final result's going to be what we're all looking for? And don't worry about. You probably haven't heard any complaints after two weeks, but I mean, how, how do you how do you handle that with a guy who's used to playing 90 percent of the snaps when the game's on the line? Well, I, I mean, I think, one, it's the, the gap between this guy and this guy is, 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 is coming up, and, and that's with age. You know, it's an older football team. Uh, and, uh, and the other part of it is I think they trust, I think they really trust each other in the fact that, I'll use Chase as an example. I'm, I'm Chase, and we all know that we want him going as hard as he can. I mean, run as hard as he can. But he also has to trust the fact that, Coach, I can't do that anymore. Put somebody in and give me a rest. Then after that rest happens and that guy goes in and plays as hard as he can, then Chase goes in and he plays even better. And that, that kind of trust with each other is what, uh, what helps those guys uh, do what they're doing. All right, this is going to need to be the last question because i got players uh, here ready to go. Front row left, Doug. Uh, can you give any context to the talent on this defense with how long you have coached and with – some of the guys, you guys have sort of unleashed them, it seems like, and they're playing fast and doing all the things you guys want them to do. But how good are these guys? Well, I, like I said, I was really, really impressed when I walked in that weight room the very first day just watching them train. Um, we've had them now for spring practice. We've had them for camp, and we had them for two games. Um, they have the opportunity to be as good as, as they want to be. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. They have the opportunity to be as what they want to be. And now it's up to them. Now every week we've got to be hungrier. Every week we've got to say, okay, this, is, this bar is way up here now. This bar is up here now. We've got to keep fighting to try to get to that bar. And, you, you know, you can't have a letdown. You've you, you got to be critical of yourself. You've got to come out every day and practice and go as hard as you can. You can't just practice one day. You know, and those are all the things I think that they bought into, and that's what they 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 believe in. And very specifically, Pete Werner is your number one Sam linebacker. He's played like 95 snaps in the first two games, according to 11 Warriors. And and Brendan White is your number one bullet. He's played 34 snaps in the first two games. Is that how you expect this to continue, or again? Do you expect things could change week to week in terms of matchups with the Sam linebacker and the bullet? It, it's going to be depend on who you're playing against. In, in other words, is this team a team that has two tight ends in the game a lot? Is this a type of team that, that you need a 245-pound linebacker as compared to a 215-pound athlete? You know, I mean, and not that, that Pete's not. I mean, it's, it, it's that kind of thing. And when you're getting teams that go 
tempo and they're trying to get a hundred and some plays on you, well, then you better have a guy that is really talented, that has worked really hard, be able to come in and tag him out. Or you're going to see what happens to a lot of teams is that that kind of system just wears them down and then they don't play as well as they could play. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.